Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Ed, are you with us? Hey, Mike, good morning. I'm here. Ed, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear okay. me, Mike? Yeah, yep. I hear you loud there. Great, welcome great. back, Ed, and, and welcome everyone else to the CEO Roadshow webinar series, where we feature small and mid-cap stocks that may be undervalued or have other upcoming catalysts that make them a potential long-term investment opportunity. Today, we're joined again by Mr. Ed Carr. He is the founder of U.S. Gold Corp. They are a publicly traded U.S.-focused gold exploration and development company, and they trade on the NASDAQ under the ticker USAU. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Ed, but before I do, everyone, please note at the bottom of your screens, there's a Q&A button. Feel free to click on that at any time during the presentation, type in your questions, and we'll get to as many of those as we can at the end. Uh, so with that said, Ed, I will turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you, everyone, for attending this U.S. Gold Corp webinar. Really uh, good to have you here in uh, mid-May. So yeah, before we get into the PowerPoint, thought I'd just give, uh, give everyone a couple words on these very volatile markets as I see them. So, uh, you know, it, it is uh, dangerous and difficult uh, sailing out there, as I'm sure if anyone is a gold stock investor knows. And, um, you know, th these markets have been really, really volatile. The overall stock market, certainly the bond markets, you know, 2022, there hasn't been many places to hide. Even if people are hiding in cash, you know, in the United States, inflation is uh, is currently at 8.5% annualized. We're actually going to get the April uh, inflation numbers tomorrow, Mike, at 8.30 in the morning Eastern time. So it'll be interesting to watch that to see if this uh, this Fed tightening, this Fed jaw boning of the markets is starting to uh, turn inflation over. It seems like it is a little bit, but I'll tell you, when you look at some of these, and you know, we all know with the geopolitical uh, events happening out there, gold had a nice pop, got up to close to two thousand dollars an ounce. Today, the last I looked, we're sitting at about eighteen forty six an ounce on gold. So not too too bad of a of a shellacking, you know, not too far off the highs. But when you look at the equities, Mike, and specifically the junior equities like U.S. Gold Corp., the development stage and exploration companies, they have been absolutely taken out to the woodshed and shot. And, um, you know, a proxy, as I've talked about before, the GDXJ index on April 18, that index was around 52. Today, we're like at 18, uh, sorry, 3840. So the last I looked, you know, that's down 27% in less than a month. We're looking at like three weeks and all of a sudden, boom, these uh, these junior equities are down 27%. And the metal itself, gold is nowhere near down that amount. So either you know the equities have been way oversold, which personally I believe the case, or the price of gold is going to drop further, one or the other. Um, personally, I think that when we get big moves like this, just a flight to liquidity, you know, portfolio managers, when they start getting uh, redemptions, they just have to go out and indiscriminately sell every position in their portfolio to meet those redemptions. And a lot of people want their cash back, they get nervous. So to me, this represents a tremendous opportunity. And I am right now myself, dipping my toe in the pool. I think you got to be cautious, but, you know, making a shopping list of some names that are on sale like U.S. Gold Corp and a bunch of others. Um, this is a really, really good time, in my opinion, to be putting some money to work. I think gold's going to be significantly higher, as I've stated, by the end of this year. I think a new all-time high probably um, by the end of 2022. So let's get into the presentation, Mike. We're going to go through it really quickly. It is on our website. I certainly will be making some forward-looking statements. So I'm going to draw everyone's attention to this slide. So U.S. Gold Corp., the company, we have a great value proposition. Uh, we have fantastic assets in the company. Our flagship project is in Wyoming. It's called the CK Gold Project. We have a pre-feasibility study. Moving the project right now towards a full bankable feasibility study. Going to file a permit application to get the mine permitted. And uh, this is a really nice project. You know, we've got 1.44 million uh, proven ounce reserve. Looking at 100,000 ounce plus production profile. Deposit comes right up to surface and it's got expansion capability abilities with just an $800 all-in sustaining cost. Uh, the company's listed on the NASDAQ, has got cash in the bank, no debt, uh, very attractive in my opinion valuation now, and three other exploration projects, two in Nevada, one in Idaho. Let's go to the next slide, Mike, talk a little bit more about the projects themselves. So you see on the left-hand side here, 
uh, flagship project in Wyoming called our CK Gold Project. Uh, the PFS pre-feasibility study was put out December of last year, shows a real, real economic project, a $323 million net present value at a 5% discount rate. That was done with 1625 gold, three, to, three and a quarter copper, and uh, gives it a 39.4% annualized internal rate of return. So really, really nice economics. We're moving it towards uh, full feasibility study now, permitting, and then want to get this into construction and production. On the right, Nevada, two district scale exploration projects, Keystone's on the Cortez trend, Maggie Creek's on the Carlin, and we've got a real nice project in Idaho called the Chalice Gold Project. Next slide. So let's look at a little financial overview of the company. Uh, draw your attention first to the stock chart. You can see there, pretty ugly looking chart, unfortunately, for U.S. Gold Corp, as this whole junior sector is. Um, you know, most of the, the junior exploration development companies, especially anyone with a development stage project, is trading today closer to a 52-week low than a 52-week high. Talked about the GXJ uh, index itself being way down. So it's a tough time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a shareholder in the company. We got a lot of good, patient, long-term shareholders, and I really hope their patience is rewarded. Um, if you look down that bottom right, look at that uh, share structure as of May 1st, only 8.34 million shares are common, outstanding. So a very tight share structure. Uh, there are some warrants and options out there. Look at that cash balance, you know, almost 9 million US dollars as of March 31st. So really nice cash balance in the company, no debt. Um, company is well-funded for all of 2022 in the next year, 2023, doesn't have to go back to the market anytime soon. In fact, if you look up on the top right, you know, the company actually raised $5 million uh, just in March that was done with one institutional investor, I believe that was at $8 a share. So um, they really saw the value at $8 a share. The last I looked, U.S. gold stock was trading around $4.80. So uh, well below that price now. Uh, two analysts cover the company. You can see their price targets there. If anyone wants to get their research reports, uh, just contact me or Mike. Let's go to the next slide. So a little peer comparison. Um, as these markets are moving very quickly in real time, this slide's probably going to be a little updated, but this was closing prices as of May 1st, you know, just a, a little universe of other companies that have development stage projects uh, in the United States. And key takeaway here, look down that bottom right. When this analysis was done, U.S. Gold Corp was trading around 0.13 times its net asset value. And um, this universe traded around 0.36 times. So, you know, it could be a doubling or tripling of valuation just to get up to this uh, uh, to this universe mean. So we really think that could be uh, achievable. Let's go to the next slide, please, Mike. So ESG, you know, we look at this uh, closely. Most mining companies do these days on the environmental side, very aware of it at the project up in Wyoming, um, working with all the local uh, stakeholders, you know, water conservation is a big deal. You probably see lots of articles about this drought out in the West and, you know, whether it's Lake Powell or Lake Mead, whatever it is, everything drying up. So uh, very conscious of that. Social, no uh, work-related incidents. That's nice. Um, we got a good uh, substantial investment with a local office in Cheyenne, use as many local Wyoming consultants as possible. On the board, you know, 80% independent, 20% female representation, 100% committed to uh, annual best practices and reviews. Next slide. Okay, going to get into the projects. We'll go through these very quickly uh, just to give you a high level overview. So, we're going to start in Wyoming with our CK Gold project. First takeaway is just to show you the location. This project's located just outside of Cheyenne. If you wanted to come visit this on a site visit, fly into Denver, rent a car, and you could drive right up to Cheyenne, hook a left, and drive right out to the project. Yeah, it's very accessible. You could literally drive a two wheel drive rental car right on top of the deposit. Um, you see down that bottom right, section 36, we have two state of Wyoming leases. That's important. The project is on all state of Wyoming ground. Um, we believe that that gives this a much faster potential permitting pathway. And because um, we're only dealing with the regulators here in Cheyenne, 
Uh, no U.S. federal government involvement in this project. So there's no BLM, EPA, even Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, we believe that permitting process is going to be about 12 months. So plan to file that mine plan permit probably sometime in July. And uh, so by July, we hope uh, 2023, we've got an approved mine plan permit. Being in Wyoming as well, it's a great state for a natural resource development project. You know, there's a lot of coal mines, a lot of uranium mines, Trona, oil and gas. So Wyoming's a real mining friendly state. In fact, look at this image, just three, three miles south of our property position. You see this big Martin Marietta materials granite quarry. So they mine aggregate there for construction in the railroad industry. They've got a rail spur, comes right into their yard. Uh, you got Interstate I-80 running right below it. So a lot of great infrastructure to uh, move diesel fuel in, move concentrate out for us in the future. State of Wyoming as well is a real partner with us. They have a 5% NSR on the project, and those revenues are going to go to the educational funds for K-12 education. So, um, so they'd really like to see this project get into production. Um, it could literally throw off tens of millions of potential dollars in the future uh, for the state. They'd really like to see that. Next slide, Mike. So here's some of the highlights directly out of the PFS. Uh, the entire document is on our website if you want to go take a look. But the deposit in Wyoming, it is an at-surface deposit. Um, we will be producing a gold copper concentrate by flotation, uh, digging a big hole in the ground. So in the PFS, we show 1.44 million gold equivalent proven and probable reserve. That's important because reserves are very economic, high degree of confidence. You can really hang your hat on those ounces. This will be currently a 10 year life of mine, looking at a 20,000 ton a day production rate, producing 108,500 ounces per year, and an $800 ASIC, that's an all in sustaining cost projected over life of mine. So gold today is about 1846. So let's just round it to 1800, you know, could throw up a $1,000 an ounce uh, margin, that'd be really nice, you know, times, let's say even 100,000 ounces a year, you're looking at a project throw up like $100 million a year, you know, for 10 years. 221 million of initial capex. Um, we think we've got very, very good uh, lines on that financing. If you look down below, you can see when Gustafson did this PFS, uh, they used 1625 gold and three and a quarter copper. Today, gold I mentioned is 1846. Copper, I think about 418, the last I looked. So they're higher even than that top line in the analysis here. And this project has tremendous leverage to a rising metals market. You see how that NPV jumps up in this analysis on the top line to 437 million. That's where it is today, even higher with current spot prices, IRR 52%. We're probably closer touching 60% today. So uh, great economics. Let's go to the next slide, Mike. So here's a reserve statement. You can see it directly out of the PFS, 1.44 million um, proven ounce reserve. So really nice. We got this high grade center to the deposit. Uh, surrounded by lower grade mineralization. It's nice because, you know, it comes right up to surface. There's no pre-stripping. Some of our first shovels in the ground will literally give us some of the highest grade uh, material, brings revenue and cash forward, flow, uh, forward for, uh, for all the shareholders. Very nice project. Next, uh, next slide. So a couple other highlights, you know, look at this, throwing off net cash flow of 500 million. Um, I've already talked about the payback and the 10-year projected mine life. On the right, you know, going to be a big open pit. We'll dig a big hole, producing uh, about 70 million tons, you know, 20,000 ton a day projected processing rate. So gold, copper, um, concentrate will be producing by flotation. A um, number of jobs, you look all the way down below. We had a press release out not too long ago. University of Wyoming did their own independent economic study. They're projecting like 364 jobs during operation, a couple thousand during construction. So it's, it's a nice economic incentive. Let's go to the next slide. So we've done a lot of work in the pre-feasibility study. You know, our president and CEO, George B., he is a mining industry veteran, 42-year career. Uh, George spent 16 of those with Barrett Gold as a very senior executive. And George has put and managed some major, major projects around the planet. He's built some big mines. He's managed some big mines. And, you know, the, the CK Gold project is pretty easy for a guy of his caliber. 
And this is a, a pretty simple project. There's no proprietary um, pieces here. You know, we're looking at primary crushing, going into sag and ball mills, then flotation tanks, you know, producing that concentrate. We'll send it to an offsite smelter. Our con is looking really good, you know, probably 25 uh, percent uh, copper, two and a half to three grams sort of uh, gold. Um, so sorry, two and a half to three ounces gold per ton. So, you know, really, really looking attractive, more work's being done on it. But important um, takeaway on this slide is George and the team did a lot of engineering in the PFS. We're moving it, uh, the project to a full bankable feasibility study right now. But all of these plant designs have already been done. We used a firm out of uh, Santiago, Chile called Alchemia. Um, so we know exactly what we need, where it's going to go. Um, and we've also had a lot of advancements. You know, we've secured land and a right of way uh, to, uh, to expand our footprint in the future if we need to. Um, we are, we want to permit this project, like I said, probably file the mine plan permit sometime in July of this year and um, just continue to, uh, to advance things. Next slide. So uh, we have had a couple press releases recently. I invite you to go out and look at those. We talked about our assays and our drilling of last year. So uh, towards the end of last year, we drilled 34 core RC holes for you know geotechnical purposes, pit slope stability, hydrology, continued engineering, et cetera. We continue with all of our baseline and environmental studies. We are drilling water monitoring wells, really putting together a good hydrological model for that permit application. And um, I think we're very close getting into the final stages, gonna file that probably in July. Next slide. So a, a last key takeaway here, I wanna talk, talk about Wyoming. Um, when we put this PFS together, George B really wanted to put a value proposition around what we know we have. And if you look at that image on the right, that's the outline of the existing 1.44 million proven ounces today. Um, that's the reserve. But this deposit's still open. You know, we've got a lot of blue sky. It's open down to the southeast, and it's also open at the depth. So if you go back and look at that last press release, you know, we've hit some nice mineralization below the depths of the pit limit. Look at this image on the upper left. We've got some holes laterally um, outside of the, of the pit where uh, we've hit mineralization as well. So we've really got some good blue sky upside. We think this deposit is going to grow. And, um, but with what we know we've got in hand today, it still presents a very, very attractive value proposition. Next slide, Mike. So catalysts coming out of Wyoming, keep your eye on all of these, you know, really a lot of catalysts in the company. So we've got some more drill assays we'll be announcing, already put a couple out, but look for some more in the near future. Moving towards a full feasibility study, we announced we've engaged Samuel Engineering out of Denver uh, to do a full bankable feasibility study. Aggregate, that might give us some nice upside economically in the future. So the deposits hosted in granite diorite, it's really nice granite looking rock. When you look at that core, kind of looks like your kitchen countertop. And that granite is worth real money. Uh, Martin Marietta, our Southern neighbor, they mine aggregate and they sell it for 16 to $18 a ton. Well, the PFS said we've got 30 million tons of it. So you can do the math, you know, it could be some real good economics to the upside on that. We think we've got great future potential financing options. The state of Wyoming might actually have some debt funding themselves, along with very attractive vendor financing. So we're exploring both of those right now. We're also looking at using our big hole in the ground in the future as a potential uh, water storage facility, like a big pit lake. Um, the West is drying up. You see the Colorado Compact. You know, it's a it, it's a serious situation. The uh, the whole Cheyenne area themselves could use more water storage. So more hydrology and work needs to be done. But uh, looking at that. Um, moving on to the permitting, you know, again, going to try and drop that permit by probably July of this year. We think that can be approved by July of 2023. Then George B. tells me it will take around 12 months to build this facility. So let's say mid-2023 until the end of 2024. So this project could potentially be into production if all the planets align by the end of 24 with full commercial production into 2025. So that's the CK Gold project. 
Moving on, we're going to go on to our exploration projects. Start with Nevada. So we got two great projects in Nevada, Keystone on the Cortez trend, Maggie Creek on the Carlin trend. Now these are early stage projects. They are big, so it's district scale in fantastic locations next to some of the biggest mines in North America. And they look very, very perspective. Let's go to the next slide, Mike, and start with Keystone. So we'll zoom into the Cortez trend. You can see our property pa uh, package and outline there on the Cortez trend. To the north of us, you know, this is the, the backbone of Barrick and now Nevada Gold Mines joint venture. Uh, the Cortez Hills mine, pipeline, big, high grade economic mines. You know, gold rush going into production. Big new discoveries as well, like ET Blue, Four Mile. So it's a prolific area. We think Keystone shares many similarities and looks really, really perspective. Go to the next slide. So Keystone, big property package for us. Again, Nevada, federal government ground, Bureau of Land Management, 650 mining claims. You know, they're all in good standing. We are permitted and bonded for 100 acres of disturbance through an effective plan of operations. So we're in really good shape here. And we started out at Keystone years ago with claim consolidation, getting this whole district tied up. First time one company's consolidated this district. And it, it's a big property package for us. You know, 20 square miles, we're looking at 12,000 acres. And then we went out and we mapped this entire district for several years, got all the geological features that reports on our website. Um, we went on to multiple geophysical surveys. Those reports are all on our website, geochemistry, that's on our website. So if you're really into the technicals of the rocks and exploration, you can go look at any of these documents. And um, ultimately, we moved into drilling. So you want to have the right host rocks, these limestone carbonates um, that are capable of hosting a world-class deposit, a Carlin-type deposit. And if we go to the next slide, Mike, we'll just show some of that stratigraphy, our host rocks. Well, it looks amazing all over Keystone, really does. Every single drill hole we've drilled in this project has hit anomalous gold. So it's not a discovery yet, but it does show us that the, the gold system is there. We've seen incredible looking upper plate and lower plate. We got this key unit that looks just like the uh, Cortez Hills deposit to our north called Wenman Unit 5. It's all over the project. Every drill hole has hit great, you know, pathfinders. We've seen like brecciation, that alteration, sooty sulfides. We've seen Rialgar, Orpiman, Stibnite, some of the highest recorded arsenic readings. So a lot of smoke at Keystone. All of us believe there is major discovery potential. And all we got to do is vector into one of these high grade feeder zones for discovery success. Go to the next slide, show you we've had to have some nice drill holes. We drilled this one in 2019, some nice gold intercepts. We probably were a little too close to the intrusive. This is in the Nina Scarn area. We've got real targeted areas on the property developing. So we're hard at it, analyzing all the data, our geological team right now. We want to have an exploration program here this summer in 2022. And I'll tell you what, if we can hit a drill hole here, this location, it could be very, very exciting, create a tremendous amount of shareholder value. So continue to watch the news on Keystone. Switching now to Maggie Creek. So this is on the Carlin trend. Key takeaway here, look how close we are to Newmont's gold quarry. See that big hole in this image? They've uh, taken out about 26 million ounces of gold. So big high grade mine, massive monster. We are like a geological nine iron away. Maggie Creek looks very, very perspective. We go to the next slide, Mike. We drilled a couple holes here last year, and um, we drilled um, on our southern claim boundary, two holes to 4,440 feet, and we hit the key lower plate geological formation called Popovich. We hit it at about 1,700 feet. Uh, the core hole looked absolutely amazing, exactly what you want to see. The assays did not run, but we believe we are on the edge of something poten potentially very, very significant. So we are kind of analyzing the data now. Do we go left? Do we go right? Which way do we vector into discovery success? We want to get out at Maggie Creek here very, very shortly, drill a couple more holes. If we can hit a big discovery here, wow, you know, it'll be exciting. I think create a lot of value for the shareholders. So watch the news here. Next slide, we talk a little bit about our Idaho project called Chalice. So real key takeaway here is we've got this historic resource, 
over 300,000 ounces of gold, uh, nice grade, 1.22 grams per ton. This is on U.S. Forest Service grounds, so we are trying to permit this right now. As soon as we get those permits in place, then we can talk about our, uh, our exploration plans. So just continue to watch the news on Chalice, but a lot of value here with that historic resource. So those are the projects. Go to the next slide, Mike. Talk a little bit about the management team. I've already mentioned our uh, president and CEO, George B. Joining him are Kevin Francis and Eric Alexander. So between those three guys, we got more than 100 years combined mining industry experience. Um, our board you know, of independent directors, a lot of uh, mining industry experience and background there and permitting and politics and uh, you know, really, really good board. Technical advisory team, second to none. Um, I think, you know, uh, a lot of contacts come there from, from George B. and his 42 years in the industry. So really, really good team. Let's go to the last slide, Mike, and just kind of conclude it up. So you got this opportunity in U.S. Gold Corp today. You know, look, we're, we're trading, last I saw was $4.80. I mean, it's uh, it's really on sale, in my opinion. You know, this is the time, if you've wanted to take a position, um, I think it, it's incredible value. The whole company today is about a $40 million market cap. You're looking at a company with, I don't know, eight and a half, nine million million, $9 million in cash. So like a $31 million enterprise value, no debt, great management team. You've got this asset in Wyoming, the CK Gold Project, moving full speed ahead towards a full bankable feasibility, ultimately, you know, permitting construction and production decision, that net present value of 323 million out of the uh, out of the PFS, you know, very, very viable project. In addition to CK, you've got uh, Keystone, Maggie Creek and Chalice, you know, all giving you that exploration upside, very tight share structure, only 8.3 million shares outstanding, listed on NASDAQ, good liquidity, you know, cash in the bank, a management team to execute. And uh, I think a valuation at these levels, it's just highly, highly attractive. So that's the story. Mike, more than happy to, uh, to save a couple minutes uh, to see if we have any questions. Yep, yep, <clears throat> we sure do here. So let me pull up this uh, question in here. Okay, last, uh, let's see, first one comes from Todd. He asks, uh, any predictions on what the Fed will do now that the market is cratering? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, every, everyone says that the Fed's going to keep hiking rates until something breaks. And I know this volatility is painful, especially if you're a gold stock investor, uh, like I am, all my positions are just down and I look at it every day, but it doesn't seem like anything to me is breaking yet. So I would anticipate they continue to pull the trigger on 50 basis point moves. Um, you know, look, we've got inflation at eight and a half percent. And if they're going to, you know, try and get the Fed funds up to anywhere near that level to control inflation, it's going to take them a while. So I think we're in this tightening phase for quite a while, you know, the next six months or so. And um, volatility is here. You know, we would probably need a massive sort of uh uh, draw down or break or something big to happen for the Fed to uh, to cut back. Yeah, I agree more. All right. Uh, thanks, Ed. Next question from Jasper. He asks, uh, can you share any predictions on gold prices over the remainder of this year? Look, I'm really bullish on gold. And um, I, I still believe that with all this volatility out there, at some point, gold's going to start getting a very, very strong bid. So again, watch for the inflation print tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern time. I don't think it's abating. You know, we still got crude oil up above 100. We got nat gas at $7.30. So energy and food prices are ripping. And you see fertilizer prices are going through the roof. Food's going to get more expensive. So I think if anything, we're going to go into stagflation. You know, the economy could slow down, go into a recession. We've already had one quarter of negative GDP print. So if Q2 comes in officially, we're in a recession. I don't know. But I would think this environment would be very, very positive for gold. We've got high negative interest rates, um, you know, a lot of nervousness out there. So my personal prediction, I think we're going to end 2022 at new all-time highs on gold. I wouldn't be surprised to see 22, 23, even $2,500 an ounce by the end of this year. Great. Thanks, Ed. Uh, next question comes from Ernest. Uh, he said, do you anticipate any new drill results before the end of the year? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. So we still got a couple drill results out of our Wyoming project uh, from last year that we will be releasing in the, in the near future. 
And then you got to look at our 2022 exploration plans. So if we can get out into Nevada, back at Maggie Creek, back at Keystone, get some good exploration programs going there. If that, you know, we drill over the summer, let's say July, August, you could be looking at assays by end of September into early October. And uh, those could be very, very significant catalysts. Thanks, Ed. Next question from Michael. Uh, do you see people shifting out of crypto as a, an inflation hedge and back into gold now as crypto has been underperforming? <laughs> well, I, I I personally don't know if crypto ever was an inflation hedge. You know, it's a wonderful speculative asset. But if you look at its correlation to like risk assets and specifically the NASDAQ, Bitcoin's very, very, very correlated to the NASDAQ and to a lot of technology stocks. So to me, it's a risk asset. It's not really an inflation hedge. And I do see, you know, the last I saw Bitcoin was around 31,000. It's been pretty beat up, you know, well off about 55% off the highs. A lot of people right now, it's getting uh, difficult because they're down around their cost basis in Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin continues to sell and a lot of people might have some stops, you know, put in and say, whoa, I get to that pain point. I'm not willing to uh, to lose any more money. I think it could have more downside or who knows, maybe these markets stabilize. You know, most of the young people out there, you unfortunately, you've never been through, lived through a bear market yet, a real bear market in your lifetime. We just get these one month, 25% ball drawdowns, and then it bounces right back like a bungee jump. But when you get into prolonged, you know, long-term bear markets, when they go down 30, 40%, it gets tough. So we'll have to see how that all plays out. And ultimately, I kind of have no idea where the price of Bitcoin is going to go. Yeah. Okay. Next question comes from Judah. Uh, what are the biggest catalysts for USAU for the remainder of 2022? Look, biggest catalysts, filing that mine plan permit for us in Wyoming. I think that's a huge catalyst. We're showing the market that we're serious about moving this project forward. We will ultimately de-risk it once that mine plan permit gets approved. That's a really, really big bat potential value driver for the company. Um, and we'll, we'll have out a full bankable feasibility study. So hopefully with some updated economics, uh, we'll see if we can get some higher spot price you know, for the, for the metals. Uh, and then exploration plans this year. If we can get back out to Keystone, to Maggie Creek, if we can hit a discovery drill hole at either one of those projects, it's got the potential to create a tremendous amount of shareholder value. So lots of catalysts in store. Um, the company's got cash in the bank. It's ready to execute. And um, you know, just continue to watch the news. Thanks, Ed. Okay, we're out of time, but I'll take this one last question here. Um, Cody asks, when are you drilling in Keystone again? Uh, look, we're hoping to get out there again this year, continue to watch the news. As soon as we've got some exploration plans finalized, we'll certainly put out a press release and announce those. Great. Thanks, Ed. All right. Well, that concludes the presentation, everybody. Uh, Ed, any closing remarks? Look, I appreciate everyone's attention. I know it's been a very, very volatile, difficult, nervous time you know, in these gold markets, but I believe long-term patience is going to be rewarded. I really do. There's a tremendous amount of value in this sector, whether it's U.S. Gold Corp or other names that are out there. So, you know, continue to be cautious, but I think you want to start putting money to work on these big drawdowns like we're currently in right now. And watch the company, you know, continue to monitor us, go to our website. You can see it here on the slide, sign up, watch our news releases, continue to monitor our SEC filings, reach out to management anytime if you have any questions or you want to get a little more, you know, technical or in-depth, a deep dive on the company or any of the projects. Great. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, everyone, as always, for your time and attention, all those great questions. The replay, we'll pop that up here in the next uh, 30 minutes. We'll get this up sooner than uh, than usual. If you guys got joined us late, want to watch this webinar, uh, the remainder of it, or watch it again. As always, we'll have these every Tuesday at 1130 Eastern, so please join us for future live webinars uh, with Ed. And uh, in the meantime, everyone, take care. Stay safe. Ed, we will uh, talk to you next week. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Bye.